The purpose of this video is to show how to perform a multiple correspondence analysis with Factor Miner. So I will load the Factor Miner package and I will take an example that is available in the MCA function. So in the bottom we have several examples. I will take an example with a data set corresponding to T. So I copy and paste the two lines of code. So I load the data set and then, then I perform the MCA. So the MCA is performed on the data set T. I said that the variable number 19 is a continuous supplementary variable and I said that the variables from 20 to 36 are supplementary categorical variables. We have 36 variables. The first 18 variables are active variables, so the dimensions of the multiple correspondence analysis will be constructed according to these first 18 variables. And then we can use other variables to understand to interpret the dimension. So a continuous variables which is used as supplementary and 17 categorical variables that are used as supplementary. So the MCA is performed. We have some graph. I will interpret the graph later. And first what we can do is to see the outputs of the function. So I can use the summary function. So with the summary functions, I have different results. So first the lines of code is recalled. Then I have a, we have a table with the eigenvalues and the percentage of variance that is explained by each dimension. So the first dimension explains uh, approximately 10% of the information. The second dimension, 8%, and so on. Then we have the results for the individuals. So there is a lot of individuals and we have the results by default with only the 10 first individuals. So on these results we have the coordinate of the individual on the first dimension, then the contribution of the individual to the construction of the first dimension. So this value is explained as a percentage. Then we have a square cosine that corresponds to the quality of representation of the individual on the dimension. So if the square cosine is close to one, it means that the individual is uh, well projected on the dimension or well projected on a map if we sum two uh, square cosine. Then we have the same result for the second dimension and then for the third dimension. We have also the results for the categories. So first for the active categories. So the categories of the active categorical variables. So we have the coordinate on the dimension, the contribution to the construction of the dimension, the quality of representation, and a v-test, which is between minus 2 and 2 if the category has a coordinate that is not significantly different from zero and which is greater than two if the category has a coordinate which is significantly greater than zero and a v test less than minus two if the category has a coordinate which is less significantly less than uh, zero. And we have also the results for the other uh, dimensions, so the second dimension and the third dimension. We have also a measure of the influence of each categorical variable. So this measure corresponds to the square correlation ratio. So it is uh, the measure which is used in a one-way analysis of variance. So if this value is close to one, it means that there is a strong link between the dimension and the categorical variable. Then we have the results for the supplementary categories. These are the same results as uh, for the active category, except that there is no contribution because 
This category do not contribute to the construction of the dimension, but we have the coordinate, the square cosine, and the v-test. And we also have the square correlation ratio for the supplementary categorical variables. And for the supplementary continuous variables, we have the coordinate on the on each dimension. So there is a, just one continuous variable in this example, and the coordinate is only the correlation coefficient between the dimension and the continuous variable. That's for the summaries of the variables. We can have a look at the graphs now. So we have a graph with a supplementary continuous variable. This graph corresponds to the correlation circle as in uh, PCA. So the arrow is close to the circle if variable is strongly linked to the two dimensions. There is also a graph of the variables. So uh, we can see that, for example, example, the variable where is linked to the first and to the second dimension. And there is a lot of variables that are not strongly linked to uh, each variable. We have a graph with uh, individuals. So the representation of the individuals. With this graph, we can see that there is no group of individuals. So I think there is not a lot of things to say about this graph. And what is more interesting in multiple correspondence analysis is a graph with uh, categories. But what we can see with this graph is that there is a lot of categories and it is not very easy to interpret this graph. So we will see how we can use the factor minor function to uh, better see the information. So I can use the function plot MCA on my output. If I do that, I will have a graph with both the individuals, the, categor the active categorical variables, and the supplementary categorical variables. Wh what we can do first is a graph with only the individuals. So as invisible, I will say that I want to have the active categories and the supplementary categories. And I have just a graph with the individuals. I can do the same thing, but as invisible, I can put the individuals and the supplementary categories. So I have just a, a graph with only the active categories. So with a graph which is higher, I can do the graph again. And the graph is more readable now, but some labels overlap. So what we can do is to use a smaller font. So using C x equal to dot eight, for example, and now there is less overlap between the, the labels. And of course, we can do the same thing with just the supplementary categories. And the graph is more readable now. Another trick to have a, a graph that is more readable is to select the categories, the modality that contribute the most, the, the 20 categories who contribute the most. So I have a graph with uh, the labels for the 20 categories that's, that contribute the most. And for the other, there is just the point, but not the labels. And the point is uh, drawn with uh, some transparency. So I can change that using, for example, and select equal gray, and then the, the dots that are not selected, that do not contribute the most, are in gray. So it, it can be useful to do that if you want to export the graph using a PowerPoint, for example, because transparency is not managed with a PowerPoint. So you can select the categories using the contribution. You can also use the square cosine. So I will just draw the categories that are the, the best represented on the map. Or I can just draw the categories that have a square cosine that is higher than uh, 0.1. 
I can draw a graph with also the individuals but I want to select only the individuals that contribute the most so the 10 individuals that contribute the most so I have the categories that have a good quality of representation and the 10 individuals that contribute the most so the other individuals are drawn with some transparency so it can be very useful when you have a lot of individuals so we can also plot a graph with uh, the variables so I can zoom on this graph using lim from 0 to 0 0.5 and the other limits which belong between 0 and 0 0.5 so it is quite clearer but I can use a smaller font and it is better now so you have in red the active variables in green the supplementary categorical variables and in blue the supplementary continuous variables so the coordinate corresponds to the square correlation ratio between the dimension and one qualitative variables for the categorical variables and for the continuous variables it is a, a square correlation coefficient between the dimension and the variable what you can also do is to perform the MCA using the, the BERT table you can perform the multiple correspondence analysis performing a correspondence analysis on the indicator matrix or performing the correspondence analysis on the BERT matrix so the difference corresponds to the, the percentage of variance that is explained by each dimension the representation of the continuous variables is the same the representation of the categorical variables is the same the representation of the categories is different the percentage of variance explained by each dimension is greater when we use the BERT method and the categories is at the barry center of the individuals so there is just a, a small difference between the, the graph that we have done before there is just a dilatation what you can also do if you do the graph with the individuals I will just consider the individuals is that I can uh, draw the individuals according to a variable so I will use different color for individuals who drink tea about one time per day those who drink tea one or two times a week more than two times per day and three to six times a week so the color is different according to the categories of one categorical variable here are some tools to better visualize the information with a multiple correspondence analysis and this is very useful when you want to analyze a survey what you can also do after a multiple correspondence analysis is to perform a clustering so you can see the video on the hierarchical clustering uh, because the hierarchical clustering can be performed on the results of uh, multiple correspondence analysis